Okay. Why did we make Elia? We made Elia because my wife had been interested in going to Israel uh, from the age about 16. She had been in the Habonim youth movement, the Zionist movement, and she wanted to make Elia when she was very young. But uh, her parents decided it wasn't a good idea, so she did not make Elia. Um, I met her about five years later, and uh, I met her because we were both members of Boal Eitzion Hatzair, or young people. We weren't all that young, uh, but we were over the age of 16 when Boal Eitzion uh, took people in. So we met there, and um, I was then uh, about 30, and uh, my wife was about 22. And um, we decided we would get married. And I suppose that right from the beginning, we had expected that someday we would go to Israel. But we got married as a conventional couple in Manchester, England in 1954, um, bought a house and lived a normal uh, life as a Jewish couple, member of the synagogue, uh, and uh, got on with our lives. Um, my eldest daughter, Faye, arrived two years later and then we were very much concerned with being parents. And this went on for uh, another four children, another three children, sorry, uh, so that we had four children all together. So my children all went to the Abonim Youth Movement and became very involved. And our daughter Faye, the eldest, made Aliyah before we did and went to a kibbutz and has lived on a kibbutz ever since. Um, the, we died, decided to make Aliyah after our sons had finished at university and when I had retired from work. I was going to take what is called early retirement at the age of 57 instead of, of working until the age of 62, which was normal for our company. And this was assisted by the company who decided they wanted people to make early retirement uh, for their interests and they paid us quite a lot of money to do it. So that it was in my favor to do it. And then we decided we would go to, we decided we would move from Manchester to Israel in 1982. Um, and we had the arrangements to make with the Shabayach and so on and so forth. And we were going to make Aliyah with her younger daughter, who was going to be 16, and she was quite happy to be going at that age because it suited her because of the situation in the school, etc. So she was going to leave a very good school in England and come to a school in uh, in Israel. And uh, we had an interview with the head of a school in Kfar Hasidim, which where they taught people in English and taught them to take the English examinations so that Mandy would have no disadvantage because she was using England. And she attended that school for um, two years and passed the, ex the examination required for her to go to university. In the meantime, we had landed in a Merkaz Kalita in Beersheba, which we had chosen because we had visited Beersheba and had friends there. And we thought this was a good place for us to start. So we did our six months in the Merkaz Kalita, where we learned some Hebrew and um, learn how to go to the supermarket and whatever else one needed to do. 
to live in Israel. Um, uh, after the uh, the after the Merkaz Kalita, we bought our, bought ourselves uh, a nice apartment in Beersheba, where we then lived for quite a few years. Um, so our daughter was already on kibbutz by the time we came, the elder daughter, and our younger daughter was going to this um, boarding school in Kfar Hasidim. Uh, our two sons had finished university uh, um, and they both stayed in England for a time um, to work or further study or whatever. And uh, they did not come and join us until later, so the family was not all together until several years after this. Um, and that's mainly the story of our earlier. How is it? What arrangements did you have to do in England before you came here? Um, well, we were helped because we had a we had an organisation called the British Aliyah Movement, and we had the Shlichim to uh, to to answer our questions. We had to make arrangements, and I stopped working several months before we came in order to arrange for packing the furniture, what we needed to get rid of, what we needed to acquire before we came, um, and so on. So that's, that's what we did. And the shipping agents were extremely good. They knew how to pack things easily and pack one thing inside another thing. So that all came over to Israel and was, was uh, here later to be collected by us for our new apartment in, uh, in Basha. Anything else? How was the, how did you make the decision to come to Israel even though you had, you knew you had two sons st still in England? Well, we thought, we thought they were old enough to look after themselves. <laughs> so, um, and that, and that worked okay. Um, my older son got a job working for the uh, tra London Transport. He was he's a, an engineer, and uh, my younger son did some further studies before coming here. And then he came here. The younger one came and went. Decided that the best thing he could do was to accept the kind offer of the Israeli government to study further and to get a doctorate at a Hebrew university. My elder son, who was, um, was already married then, decided to go and work in the building industry, which he has done ever since. How was the Ulfan, the Merkaz Kita? Well, I knew quite a lot of Hebrew before I came because I'd been through a Talmud Torah and uh, so I knew all the Hebrew grammar and so on and it helped. It was a time when you got used to being in the country anyway and you didn't have any obligations because you had an apartment in the uh, Merkaz Kalita and you had time to arrange to go and buy yourself a, a house to live in or an apartment to live in uh, from that. So it was a very good stepping stone to make in the country. And then we gradually got used. I, I uh, got a job fairly quickly in Beersheba, working for the Israel Chemical Industries. Uh, I, I got a part-time job. I didn't work full-time because by this time I was almost 60 years old anyway. So I got a part-time job and I stayed in that job for another 20 years. So that I didn't, I left just before my 80th birthday. Okay. How was it working in Israel compared to England? Uh, it was different. <clears throat> it 
was found, I found difficulty in working here because people did not tend to cooperate with each other. I'd worked for a very large chemical company in England and everybody was working for the company. When I came to Israel, I found that most people were working for themselves. So they weren't, up, they weren't always very helpful to you when you wanted to get something done. But uh, I had worked for an extremely good company in England. So that was my good fortune. Part of uh, my work in Israel often consisted of using my English rather than my knowledge of uh, chemistry. But I used to um, <coughs> correct people's letters, correct what they'd written when they were giving a lecture in English. So I was quite useful to them from that point of view. And we were we were very friendly with the, the lady who had uh, taken care of us for the Aliyah department, who was herself English and had lived in Beersheba for many years. So she would call, call us occasionally to talk to a room full of people who were doing a pilot tour and trying to find out, trying to ask questions. Um, I remember telling one group that there were insects in Israel and one lady screamed and said, I'm, I'm not going to Israel. <laughs> but I think she probably came. But there were obviously people who made Aliyah and then found that, that they were disappointed. Uh, I had talked to Shlichim about this and I said to them, why didn't you tell them this and why didn't you tell them that? And they said, because they have selective hearing. And they, 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 they want, didn't want to hear any anything against it, so they just ignored it. Uh, because, for example, um, we had to go to see a few people in Ashkelon who made Aliyah to Ashkelon. A group came together. And they came from a certain type of life in England where they were um, running small clothing factories. So, and this fellow said to me, they, they, what they were offering me in Israel was less than I paid to the girls who worked for me in the clothing factory. But, you know, you, you have to know about this in advance. And one lady who said she didn't know what food to give her children because in England they used to mainly bake beans on toast. Um, and at that time, it actually wasn't easy to get baked beans in, in Israel. Since then, uh, Heinz baked beans has become a speciality in supermarkets. But at that time, you couldn't get baked beans. She didn't know how to feed her children and so on. Did you have conversations with Shlichim in England before you came? Oh, yes. Yes. No, we were quite, I mean, because we were involved in the British Aliyah movement, we used to have conversations all the time with the Shlichim. And I did a Hebrew class in England as well. Although I'd learned Hebrew when I was younger, so I went to a Hebrew class to improve it uh, slightly. But I think Aliyah from England was pretty good in that more people stayed in Israel than, for example, people from America. A high, a high proportion of American Olem went back to America. But the British Olem mainly, I think, stayed. I don't know the figures. I think in the main they stayed in Israel and try to make it work.
but they used to say that if you want to, if you think you can come to Israel and make a small fortune, you should come with a large fortune. Okay. <laughs>